things that are maybe plain, maybe not what you expected when you walk in the building. Well, that's because this is a new place for us. We've been here a little over five months. And in, the, in that time, we have changed what was a nightclub into a church. Isn't it something like how God grabs something and turns it around and gives it life? And that's what's happened here. So if you would just pardon our mess as we grow, we sure would appreciate your understanding. Now, moving far along, let me tell you what's happening here at Sheridan. Here at Sheridan, we have Sunday morning services at 10 a.m. Here you are. Wednesday Bible study at 7, from 7 to 8. During these two services, we have child care. So you can come with your cheering. It's going to be all right. Now, how many are here for the first time at Sheridan Church? Welcome. Come on, everybody give them a round of applause. Welcome to Sheridan. Here at Sheridan, Jesus is our priority. The gospel is our mission, and discipleship is our purpose. So we thank you for being here, and we consider you part of the family. If you are new to Sheridan, I'm going to ask you to do something for me. If you would, take your phone out and dial nine, text 97000. That's 97000, and text new, N-E-W, the number two, and then Sheridan. New to Sheridan, that's text to 97000. I'm report, repeating it because folks are walking in and you've lied. Uh, squirrel. Lost you. Nine seven zero zero zero, and so text that way. I know that you're here, and it also allows us to give you information about what's going on here at Sheridan. So welcome. We considered you part of the family. And speaking of what's going on here at Sheridan, another thing we want to offer you are connect groups. Connect groups are so important to making a family work. Amen. Connection, communication, it goes a long way. I mean, we've got connect groups from the elder. We've got a veteran connect groups. We've got missions connect groups. Come on, we've got women's connect groups. Things are happening. And every second Sunday of the month, we have a new visitors class. So you'll get more information about that. We're updating the website, and you'll be seeing that information on there as well. I mean, we've got a, we've got a connect group for missions where you go over there, they grab your heart for missions, and teach you a little bit about something. If you haven't ever been there, maybe stir something in you. Because we work with two organizations so far here in town where we get our to put our hands to something and people might see Jesus through us. Amen? Amen. And that's what it's all about. We need to show the world that there is a Christ and he is born. Now, today we're going to have a presentation. And the presentation will be about the life of Jesus. So I'm going to ask you to do something. I need to ask you to turn off your cell phone now. Because we don't need anybody calling at the moment Jesus is rising from the dead. Amen. He gets all the glory for that. So turn it off. And let's pray. Father, we thank you. Our hearts are prepared for what you have for us this morning. Holy Spirit, have your way in this place. For it is by your power that our Savior has been raised. In Jesus' name, amen. And after a trinity of trials, Pontius Pilate handed over the sun, they figured they'd won. Found innocent but made guilty, they beat him until his flesh was torn. Put a robe on his shoulders and into his head, they beat a crown of thorns, they figured they'd won. Blood now dripping down his brow, they led him away to Calvary carrying his own cross. 
And the crowd mocked and ridiculed him and yelled, crucify him, crucify him. They figured all hope was lost. They figured they'd won. And at Calvary, when they drove the nails in his hands and feet, stood in mockery as they watched him bleed, when he pulled up on the nails just to be able to breathe, and when he said, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? They figured they'd won. And above his head, the inscription, the king of the Jews. And when he said, I thirst, they offered him sour wine and mockery. And he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. They figured they'd won. And when he turned to the thief and said, this day you will be with me in paradise, it is finished. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit when he hung his head and he died. When the soldier took a spear and they pierced him in his side, they figured they had won. Then there was an earthquake. And I can only imagine the look on their face. When the veil of the temple tore, the rocks break and the dead raised, they knew that they hadn't won. And on the third day, the angel of the Lord came and he rolled the stone away. Jesus got up with all power to defeat death, hell, and the grave, and they knew they hadn't won. And when the angel of the Lord said to Mary and Mary, Jesus, who you are looking for, who was crucified, he's not in the tomb. The tomb is empty. He is risen. He is not dead. My God is alive. You call my name. And I ran out of that grave. Hey. Out of the, out of the dark. Ooh. And to your glorious day. was heavy, but chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter, I was an orphan, but you called me a citizen of heaven. Yeah. When I was broken, you were my healing. Were my healing. Your, love. your love is the air that I'm breathing. I have a future, have a future. Oh, my eyes are open. Oh, it's when you call my You told Lazarus, come forth. You called my name. And I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness. Out of the darkness. And to your glorious death. Oh, hallelujah. Now whom the sun sets free is truly free indeed. Anybody got your freedom? So bless the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm free. Oh, hey. oh I, am. I am free. Hey. Yeah. But praise the Lord. I'm free. No longer no bound. No more chains holding me. No more chains holding me. My soul is, My soul is resting. It's just a blessing. It's just a blessing.
up the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We lift you up in this place. We lift you up in this place.
across this place right now. Come on, we lift up the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Come on, he's forever seated. Come on, we worship a risen Savior. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. We've been washed in his blood. We've been washed in his blood. Oh, I'm so thankful. Come on, somebody give him praise. Hallelujah. Come on, declare the name of Jesus. Come on, declare the name of Jesus. Declara el nombre de Jesús. Hallelujah. We worship, we worship. Hallelujah. I wish somebody would praise like he's alive. He took back the keys of death, hell, and the grave. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. Hallelujah. Is somebody grateful? He's alive. Come on, it may have looked dark on Friday. I'm thankful for the sacrifice that was made. But come on, on the third day. Come on, on the third day. In the tomb because he he's alive he's risen hallelujah hallelujah lord we give you praise in this place we thank you for dying for us lord we know that there wouldn't be a resurrection without the crucifixion lord we're thankful but today symbolizes that you rose that you didn't stay in the grave that you, you went down to hell. You took back the keys of death, hell, and the grave. You took our shame. You took our place. 
and we are grateful because Lord, we know because you came up out of the grave, we came up with you. We rose too. Hallelujah. Because he's seated, I'm seated. Because he's alive, I'm alive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for being here in this place. We're so thankful to be able to gather as a church family and worship, lift up the name of Jesus, the one who is forever seated at the right hand of the Father. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, somebody said. Hallelujah. Well, you can be seated and then turn your eyes to the screen. Shattered, but you see hope. I see broken, but you see beautiful, and you're helping me to be. That you're restoring me piece by piece. There's nothing too dirty that you can't make worthy. You wash me in mercy. I am clean. There's nothing to Beating, beating a 
inside my chest Oh, I'm coming alive with joy and destiny Oh, cause you're restoring me a piece by piece There's nothing to dirty that you can make worthy You wash me in mercy Oh, I am clean There's nothing to dirty that you can make worthy You wash me in mercy I am clean because of your sacrifice. Washed in the blood of your sacrifice, your blood flowed red and made me white. My dirty rags are purified. I am clean. Sacrifice your blood flowed red and made me white. My dirty rags are purified. I am clean. Oh, washed in the blood of your sacrifice. Your blood flowed red and made me white. My dirty rags. I'll purify, I am clean, I'm clean, oh, I'm clean, oh, I'm clean, because of your blood, Jesus, there's nothing to tell. That you can make worthy You wash me in mercy Oh, I am clean Oh, there's nothing to dirty That you can make worthy You wash me in mercy I am clean. Yes, I am Can we give it up for Jesus today? I said, can we give it up for Jesus today? Anybody excited that he rose again? My God, my God. Well, first of all, I just want to say that it is an honor, such an honor. My wife and I love coming to Sheridan Church. The love is real and we appreciate it. You have amazing leadership in Pastor Jackson and Kendra and we are so excited to be able to be here with you all this morning. And on behalf of my beautiful wife, Brianna, y'all did good. Y'all hear her for singing this morning? I did good. Uh, my beautiful wife, Brianna, we just want to welcome you all. Um, to everybody watching online here in person, we just want to welcome. Um, there was a man many years ago when I lived in the Washington, D.C. area. He went, to the, he went to the store and he started filling his cart up with just all kinds of stuff. Not really considering the cost he was just shopping. Anybody ever been there? Been to Home Depot, Sprouts, Lowe's, and you, all of a sudden you look up, you went into the store for a, a jar of mayonnaise and came out with $372 worth of stuff. Anybody ever been there? <laughs> so here this man is, he's in this store, and then he gets to the register, and it's time for him to give an account of everything that he has filled up in his cart. And then he's gripped with the reality that he's filled his cart up 
with too much and now he can't pay the price. So now he's standing here, he's embarrassed, he feels shame because he has filled his cart up and the price was too expensive. Then there was a gentleman who saw him and graciously came over and said, please allow me. So this gentleman came over and the guy that had filled up his whole cart with stuff, the gentleman turned to him and said, it's paid in full. Can y'all say paid in full with me this morning? So here this guy is, no longer having to do with the shame of not being able to afford that which he has filled his cart up with. If we can take a parallel and look at our lives, we filled our lives up with things that we can't pay for. We filled our lives up with sin and the cost of that sin was too high a cost for you and I to pay. David said in Psalm 51, five, I was shapen in iniquity and conceived in sin. New Living Translation says it this way, from birth I was a sinner, yes, from the moment I was conceived. What David was trying to help us understand, I believe, was that sin operated on two levels in his life. First of all, he was born into sin. We are born sinners and there's nothing we can do about it. The Bible says in John that what is born of flesh is flesh. What is born of the spirit is the spirit. So when he said, I was born into sin or I was shapen in iniquity, what he was saying was, because I was born from somebody else, I have this sin nature that I can do nothing about. Independent of a move from God, there is nothing we can do about our sin nature. And then when he said, um, from my mother's womb, so basically what he was giving us an idea of is we were born into something that we have no control over. Sin operates on two levels. It operates in this immoral, innate desire that we have, but then it also creates practice or it operates itself in practice. So here David is dealing with the reality that he is a flawed man who has sinned against God. We have fallen short of the glory of God. The Bible says there is none righteous, no, not one. And that is to help us understand that in our own humanity, we are flawed people with foibles that we cannot fix on our own. That creates for us a dependency on God because we can't fix it on our own. Because if I could fix my problems, by myself, Jesus wouldn't have had to go to Calvary. So when here this man is, he's standing at the store and it says paid in full. Somebody say paid in full. Paid in full. When I worked in the, I work in the finance and collection, uh, when I worked in finance and collections, when you saw paid in full come across the screen or when you got a letter that said paid in full, that means that you no longer owed a balance. That your balance had been completely satisfied. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 9 verse 22, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. That word remission in the original language basically means to be relieved from the imprisonment of, price of, and penalty of sin. When Jesus went to Calvary, he went to Calvary with one mission, freedom. He went to Calvary with one mission, and that was for us to no longer be slaves to sin. So, many of us have been tied to a life of sin and to the shame of sin, not realizing that when he went to Calvary, we no longer had to be tied to the shame of sin. We no longer had to be prisoners of our sin nature. Because when he said at the cross, it is finished, I believe he said some things were finished for us. When he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do, I believe he was talking about the soldiers who were crucifying him and punishing him. But I believe that he was always also talking about this little crazy boy from, north, from the north side of Tulsa who would sin and live a life that wasn't pleasing to him. So when he said, Father, forgive them, I believe I was not part of that them. 
I believe that he was thinking about me when he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. See, I wasn't counting the cost of fornication. I wasn't counting the cost of pride. I wasn't counting the cost of my wrath. I wasn't counting the cost of being a sloth. My God, I've been called some stuff. But one thing I never want to be called is a sloth. You can't even say that word attractively, sloth. <laughs> but I had to give an account and I had to come to the reality like David did after talking with Nathan, the prophet of the Lord and his trusted advisor. He brought David into the reality that David was flawed, but even in the midst of all of his flaws, David was still called a man after God's own heart. So that tells me that we are not all bad from birth, but that there is something at birth that needs to be dealt with. So when Jesus said, no greater love than this, than a man lay down his life for his friends, friends, he was talking about us. When he took the nails, he was thinking about me. When he took the nails, he was thinking about Jordan. When he took the nails, he was thinking about Jackson. When he took the nails, he was saying, friend, I love you so much that I'm willing to pay your tab because you can't pay it. So I want to talk to somebody today who has been dealing with shame. It is finished. I want to talk to somebody who has been dealing with the guilt of your sin. It is finished. I want to talk to somebody who has been dealing with the issues that you have been dealing with because of sin and things in your life. He said, Father, forgive them. So I want to talk to you today and tell you that Jesus paid it all. We don't owe a balance to hell. We don't owe the devil anything because when Jesus died on the cross, he died so that we can live a life of freedom. The Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Any free people in here today? I said any free people in here today? And I know there was a song many years ago by evangelist Whitney Houston and the name of that song was The Greatest Love of All. And in that song, she said, The Greatest Love of All, it's easy to achieve, but I beg to differ because on John 3, 16, the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And what Jesus had to go through so that we could be free, it wasn't easy. It cost him everything. It cost him his life, but he gave his life so that we could have him. Bible says that we should take on, be partakers of the divine nature. Bible says unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. And when he said, be born again, the disciples were a bit confused because they said, how can, be, how can one be born again? Well, friends, I want to tell you today that Jesus rose from the grave so that now he can not only be Savior, but so that he could also be Lord. See, a lot of people don't have a problem with him being Savior. They don't have a problem with giving him the applause for dying. And him dying gave us freedom, but his raising gave us dominion. His dying gave us freedom, but his raising gave us dominion. We can defeat death, hell, and the grave because we are partakers of the new nature and that new, thing, and that new nature is sons and daughters of Jesus. Jesus is Lord. He rose so that we could be free. You don't have to carry the weight of your sin anymore. He paid for it all. Somebody say paid in full. You don't have to carry the shame. Somebody say paid in full. You don't have to have the weight of the guilt. Somebody say paid in full. You don't have to walk in depression anymore. Somebody say paid in full. You don't have to carry anxiety anymore. He paid it all. You don't owe a balance. Jesus loved us so much that he was willing to bear this pain. He became a curse so that we could be free. Our debt has been paid in full. Amen? Amen. Amen. Are you glad you came to church today? Are you glad you got a seat today? 
Well, I want to welcome you. My name is Jackson Lawmeyer. My wife, Kendra, and I, we are privileged and honored to serve as the pastors here uh, at Sheridan. And today, it's such a special day, and we're glad that you're here with us. And something we're getting ready to do is we're getting ready to take communion together. I know we have some people who are visiting with us. And, um, you know, at our church, we take communion, somebody said, a lot. I mean, we do it like almost every week. And so, but I don't want to take for granted that everybody understands the power or the depth to what we're getting ready to do. You know, this whole communion thing, you know, it's the bread is his body. The juice is his blood. And during the time when Jesus was here walking and doing ministry, he told his followers, these were not the people who were against him. These were the people who were following him. Jesus said, unless you eat of my flesh and unless you drink my blood, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. And when his followers heard him say those words, they said, Jesus, we're with you on the preaching and the teaching. And Jesus, we're with you on the signs, the miracles, and the wonders. But this eating your flesh and this drinking your blood, we can't go there with you. And you know what they did? They left. His followers left him. And then there were the 12. And Jesus looked at his 12 and he said, you guys are gonna leave me also? And my favorite disciple, the one who's usually wrong 99% of the time, but even a broken clock is right twice a day. Simon Peter said, Lord, where else would we go? For you alone have the words of eternal life. Now today we partake of the bread and the juice. And we don't think much of what Jesus was saying then. And if you were here with us for our Good Friday service, you probably have, yeah, somebody was here. One person was here, praise God. You probably have a better understanding of blood. You know, what was, what was Jesus' deal with blood? And, you know, Good Friday is nothing but what? Blood. And in the Old Testament, what did God require constantly? He required blood. And so why blood? I remember when I was a younger kid, always wondering, what is God's deal with blood? Like the book of Leviticus. You know what the book is from chapter, from chapter to chapter to chapter. It's all about blood. And let me tell you why God has a thing about blood. You see, God set a price for sin. A lot of people think the devil set the price for sin. The devil didn't set the price for sin. He didn't have that authority to do that. God set the price for sin. God said to Adam and Eve in the garden, in the day that you eat the tree of knowledge of good and evil, in that day, you will die. Therefore, the price of sin has been set at death by God himself. God said the price for sin is death. And here's the really bad news. Every single person in here has sinned. As Anthony said earlier, quoting David, you were born into sin, which means you owe a price. And I love the illustration of all these different items, but let me tell you the cart that you're carrying. Your cart doesn't have groceries in it. Your cart doesn't have items from Home Depot in it. The cart that you are carrying, do you know what it is? Death. You owe a price of death. 
for there is none righteous, not one. God set that price. That's the price. So why blood? You see, you first have to understand what is death? Death is the removal of life. So in order for there to be death, what does there first have to be? There has to be life. So why does God require blood? Leviticus chapter 17, verse 11, God tells us exactly why. God says, for the life of a creature is where? Where is it? It's in the blood. And I have given to you this to make atonement for yourselves on the altar. This is when they would sacrifice animals. It is the blood that makes atonement for one's life. You say, okay, what's the big deal about blood? What's the price for sin? Somebody tell me. What is it? What is death? Death is the removal of life. What is life? Life is in the blood. So the penalty for sin that God said in the book of Genesis, the penalty is blood. That's the penalty, blood. Because the shedding of blood, it is the removal of life, which is itself death. So why does God require blood? Because that's the price that he set. That's why you see in Genesis chapter four, an animal has to be sacrificed for the remission of sin for one person. In the book of Exodus, a lamb is sacrificed for the remission of sin for one family. In the book of Leviticus, an animal is sacrificed for the atonement of sin, not just for a person or for a family, but for the entire nation of Israel. The great news about what happened 2,000 years ago was uttered out of John the baptizer when he said, behold, the Lamb of God, who doesn't just take away the sins of a person, who doesn't just take away the sins of a family, who doesn't just take away the sins of a nation, but behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And when the Lamb of God had his blood shed, life was removed, God set the price for sin. And then you know what God decided all by himself without asking us our opinion? God said, this is the price for sin, death. And then God himself said, guess what I'm gonna do? I myself, I set the price and I will also pay the price for sin. That is the good news of the gospel, that that price has been paid. And when we come to take communion together, we are remembering and we are partaking of that which was done 2000 years ago. That's why I can tell you, even in 2024, there's still power in the cross of Jesus Christ. In fact, I'd say there's still power in the blood of Jesus Christ. Paul said, we preach Christ and him crucified. I'm not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of God unto salvation for anybody who would believe. Will you stand to your feet with me? We're gonna take communion together. But before we do that, I'm gonna ask everybody, if you would just take a moment, close your eyes, bow your heads, because this is a opportunity that each of us have to come before God. Because if you're still pushing the cart, today is your day to let go of the cart. If you're still striving in your own efforts, Today is a day to make Jesus Lord. You see, your sin has to be dealt with. And it can be dealt with in one and two ways. You can stand before God and give an account for your life and you can pay the price for your sin. 
You can do that if you want to. And the price for your sin will be eternal death. If you want to pay the price, you can pay it. But then there's another option. And this is why we call it good news. The other option is you can receive what Christ has done for you. You can receive the price that was paid 2,000 years ago in full. Now with every head bowed and every eye closed, if you're here and you say, Pastor Jackson, I need to receive what God has done for me. I'm a sinner. There's no doubt about it. I'm just like everybody else and I'm in desperate need of a savior. And today on Resurrection Sunday, 2024, I wanna make a decision to give my life to him because he gave his life for me. If that's you, I want you to just slip your hand up real quickly. This is an expression to God of a moment of you're ready to surrender. Yeah, God sees those hands. God sees those hands. Saying, I, I want to give my life to Christ today. Now, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to ask every person that is here with me to pray this prayer out loud together. Just join me in praying and saying, Father God, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your grace that reaches a sinner like me. I declare Jesus is Lord, not just of the universe, but my life. Forgive me, cleanse me, wash me. And Lord, fill me with your spirit in Jesus name somebody shout amen it's been paid that's why on resurrection Sunday we're not mourning the death of Christ what are we doing we're celebrating the resurrection now if you will take your communion elements and on that fateful night some 2,000 years ago that the church has historically called Monday Thursday but a lot of people debate when it was whether it was uh, uh, Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday whatever the case may be I can't all the arguments are good here's what I know he came 2,000 years ago and he broke bread of his disciples on one night during Holy Week and he gathered his disciples and he said this bread right here this is my body my body which will be broken for you and the symbolism is incredible because every single one of us we are born broken born broken from our mother's womb Jesus though being God is completely whole lacking no thing yet he became broken so that broken people like us could in return become whole like him. That's the good news. So today, as we break the bread, we give thanks, we can experience wholeness in our lives. Let's break the bread together. And then he took the cup. This is what amazes me and why I like to do communion so much here at our church because where is life found? It's found where? In the blood. So when I take this cup, I'm not just remembering what he has done, but in the spirit, what am I partaking of? I'm partaking of life itself because the life is in the blood and the blood of Jesus still has power to give me life and life eternally. Jesus said this cup right here, this is my blood which will be poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Now when we take this cup, we're not just going to be in doom and gloom. We are going to shout with a shout of victory because how many of you know the grave has been robbed. 
The grave is empty. He's no longer there. Let's take the cup together. Father, today we rejoice. He is risen. And he is risen indeed. Lord, we bless you today and we thank you in Jesus' name. Are you thankful? Give somebody a high five, take a seat and say, I'm thankful. I'm thankful. I hope you really mean it. Are, are you actually thankful? I decided to do things a, a little different this Resurrection Sunday. Um, on Palm Sunday, when I preached here, I talked about how Jesus sent two of his disciples to go and get a donkey. And the donkey was to be given by the people who owned it. And I challenged us as a church this holy week to do two things, to, to go, uh, and, and that was to go out into the world and, and help bring people to Jesus and then to come back prepared to give. And um, typically we would do our offering like in the middle of service, but today's a special offering that we're going to receive. And this is what I want you to hear from me. On Friday night, we talked about the five different types of offerings in the book of Leviticus. Um, three were optional, two were mandatory. The mandatory offerings or sacrifices was the sin offering and the trespass offering. And those were absolutely mandatory. Everyone had to partake of those. But the other three types of sacrifices, it was the burnt offering, the peace offering, the grain offering, those offerings God labels as a sweet smelling aroma to him. Those three, not the last two, but those three. And the reason the first three, the peace offering, the grain offering, and the burnt offering, the reason they're a sweet smelling aroma to God is because they're optional. Meaning you get to choose whether or not you participate in that type of offering. Those three, the peace offering, the grain offering, the burnt offering. Those were offerings of thankfulness. Thank you for what you have done. Obviously, you know what the sin offering is for, is to cover sin, the trespass offering, to cover trespasses. But the three that were optional, they were a sacrifice, they were an offering of saying thank you to God for all that God has done. Now you fast forward to us today. Did anybody bring your grain with you? Did anybody bring your burnt offering with you or your... Okay, so we, we understand that we did not bring in grain to the house of God. You can. You know, a funny side story. Years ago, I was preaching and I preached about planting seed in the house of God. Planting seed. And the next Sunday, I took up an offering. Mike, you'll remember this. The next Sunday, we took up an offering and Mike Smith calls me and says, you'll never believe what somebody put in the offering. I said, what? They put a package of seeds in the offering, like actual seeds. And I'm like, okay, well, okay. But at least they were paying attention. But we're getting ready to partake of an optional offering here. You see, the sin sacrifice and the trespass sacrifice, Christ has already paid. You can't pay that one. But we're going to have an opportunity, and it's optional. And because it's optional, when you participate in it, you know what God says about it? This is a sweet smelling aroma to me because it's the overflow of your heart. It wasn't mandatory, but it was completely optional. Which is why Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, he talks about if you sow sparingly, you reap sparingly. If you sow generously, you reap generously. But then he says, your financial giving, your financial offering, it is an expression of your thanksgiving to God. Just like the peace offering, the grain offering, the burnt offering, they were expressions of thanksgiving to God. Today on Resurrection Sunday, when you choose to voluntarily participate in an offering to God, 
what you are doing is you are expressing thanks to God in a way that costs you something. You see, we understand giving thanksgiving to God with the words of our mouths, and we need to do that in praise and worship. But your offering today, it is an expression of your thanks to God for all that he has done. And let me just tell you something. God has done a lot in my life, and I'll bet you, has God done a lot in your life as well, where he made a way maybe when it didn't seem like there was going to be a way, or, or maybe he saved your son that you never thought would come to the Lord Jesus Christ, or maybe he touched your body when the doctor said, there's nothing we can do for you. Anybody in here got that testimony that God showed up and God showed out in my life? You can't repay him. You understand that, right? You can't repay God. That's not what we're doing today. What we're doing today is we are thanking God in an expression beyond words. We're thanking God in an expression in the deed of giving. And so I'm going to give you the opportunity, invite you. It's totally voluntary. It's totally optional. You can do it if you want to. You don't have to if you don't want to. But I would encourage you to join in to this sweet smelling aroma that's gonna be offered up to God and God will be pleased in what we're getting ready to do because we're not giving grudgingly. We're not giving out of compulsion. What are we getting ready to do? We're gonna give cheerfully. Where are the cheerful givers at Sheridan? The cheerful. There are offering envelopes in all of your seats. Multiple ways that you can give. You can give by uh, cash, check, credit card through uh, those envelopes. You can give by text to give. You just text the number on the screen, 918-992-4349. Uh, you can go to the church's website, Sheridan.church. And, uh, or you can give, um, this was brought to us today by a good brother. Uh, you can give silver and gold if you want to. This is one ounce of gold right here that was brought to the church today. So however you choose to, uh, to give, uh, know that I believe God's going to bless it. And let me pray over your seeds uh, this morning. Father, we thank you. What a privilege. What an opportunity it is that we get to come and bless you because God, you have so greatly blessed us. So much so that we're here today on a Sunday morning in Tulsa, Oklahoma in 2024, freely here. And Lord, we're grateful. We're grateful that you saved our souls, that you've redeemed our families, that you've given us health and life and vitality and provision. And God, we're just grateful. And Lord, we never want to stop expressing our gratefulness and our thankfulness with our words. But Father, in this moment, we, we are intentional. We're intentional to bring a sacrifice to you that is a sweet smelling aroma to you, a, an offering to you that is out of the overflow of our hearts and thankfulness that we're cheerful to do this. Who are not in a grudgingly way doing this. We're not in a manner of compulsion doing this. We're cheerful to do this. And Father, I know that every dollar that is brought in today, Lord, you have the ability to multiply its effectiveness in your kingdom so that your borders are expanded to the north, the south, the east, and the west. And Father, we thank you for the small role that every single one of us, we get to play in building your kingdom here on earth, just as it is in heaven. Father, we love you and we bless you today in Jesus' name. And everybody cheerfully said, Amen and amen. There are offering buckets here up at the front today. We're going to dismiss through our offering. Our worship team is going to come lead us in some worship. Let's go and let's grow in Jesus' name. You are dismissed. God bless you. Happy Resurrection Sunday. I am free. 
It's just a blessing. Praise. 